We, um, we have some time for some questions. I'm sure there are some good questions. And I'm sure there's somebody running around with a microphone. Don't be shy. He's traveled a long way to answer questions. No questions. Oh, I'm sure there will be. They're just. Uh, hi, this is Thomas Kurti from Hungary, from much smaller family business. Uh, but what I saw similarity is uh, is that we we both are are getting after many much much of adversity, how to how to get through, and I would be very curious uh, about your energy source. Where do you get your energy for renewal after you had that much things you went through? Uh, well. Um, I mean, I, I was lucky to have a, a balanced nature. And I think that if you feel that you're doing the right thing, it makes you feel good. And then I think family and people you work with are an important source of energy and well-being. And ultimately, not really being afraid and just facing what's up there and will come. And that's probably the the biggest lesson I've, I've learned in the last years. Thank you. <coughs> She's coming. Oh. Hi, my name is Andrea Torres from Colombia, and I was wondering why the baton was passed on from your grandfather's generation to your generation. Why wasn't somebody picked in the generation, like your, your parents' generation? Yeah. Well, well, what happened basically is that in my, um, so in my mother's generation, th there wasn't anyone really involved within the business. Now, why is that? Because my grandfather's generation maybe stayed at the helm for all the time, also because you didn't have anyone who had a very strong inclination to it. So it's a couple of things that ended up that not, there's really no one from the generation above me who, who has been involved in, in the family business. Could I ask? It, it wasn't by choice or design. How, how, how do they support you, your mother's generation? Well, what, what basically happened is that my mother did not support me, and so. Uh, Join the club. Yeah. So I mean, the interesting thing is that apart from my mother, and it's a very public situation, who did not support me and really went against all the family, overall, the rest of my family has been very supportive from my grandfather's sisters to my cousins of all generation. So I've, I've felt very supported, and I'm very grateful to, to all of them. Great. I'm Dave Juday from Chicago. Um, following up on that same line, are, is, are you or somebody in your family investing significantly to try to bring some family governance and some family cohesiveness in what appears to have been a little bit of a, 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 a leapfrog situation to bring some continuity? We have. We have basically today the way we're structured is that we have a private family company which all family members are shareholders of. It's uh, limited. There are limited partners and general partners which are appointed by two thirds of the limited partners. So basically, these are the individual responsible for the family interest. The family interest today are all held in one holding company, which was the result of mergers of different entities, which we've done in the last three years, of which uh, the family has more than 55%. And there you have representative of the family and independent directors. And then every single business and investment we have are then directly operated by the holding company's management. So 
uh, it works. We have uh, a group of family members who meet every quarter to discuss what's happening, and we have one uh, AGM every year where all the family gets together with also some social activities around it, and for now it, it, it works. Um, but it will be a, continu a continuous evolution to it. I think the important thing I want to add is one of the reasons why we really worked hard in, in basically merging all the different entities is that today the family through the private company owns shares in a listed vehicle, so there's no question about how much is it worth. The market tells you that. And in the event someone wanted to exit, we have liquidity to provide that. So we've taken out a lot of the sources of tensions you can have in, in families. Could we hear some about your values? How did you reach these? And how did you carry these within your organization? The my, values, your, my, the values of fiat or your, your family. Yeah. Well, um, the, the, the values of, of fiat are really done by the leadership team of fiat. Um, the family values, we really have not worked to it and we don't really have uh, some extent values. I think what we, we, what we believe in is, is probably more applied to the family foundation we have, who's really now only working on education. So what we really think is that merit is important and what we really think is that it's, it's the only way to have better people is ultimately to educate. And, uh, and so that's where we spend most of, of our energies. Grant. Um, Grant Gordon from the United Kingdom. Um, the conference that we're at today, um, the, the theme of the conference is innovation. And I just wondered if you could share something with us about what is the philosophy of your company of Fiat, uh, you as the leader of Fiat, in terms of innovation in your family business? No. Well, and, and you've heard so many things about innovation during these two last weeks. Uh, we, we really tend to, to um, as I was mentioning before, to see innovation more as adapting to change rather than seeing us le leapfrog. So a big example, for example, in the car industry is electric cars. So for now, our thesis is that electric cars are not really solving any problems in terms of environment, and they're actually very expensive to do and to buy. So if you still produce electricity, like for example in the United States burning coal, and then you have these batteries who cost a fortune, and of which probably one of every four million just explodes, you're not doing nothing. Instead, we have combustion engines, and we probably have today the most efficient combustion engines, and so we try to improve that. At the same time, if technology will change, and it won't be us changing it, and then electricity will be done with other sources, and batteries because of cell phones will have changed completely, then we'll be happy to move that in that direction. So that's how we view innovation. We just think it's important to live with change all the time, but we think it might be sometimes riskier to, to try and think you'll design a future. So we'd rather try and see how we can adapt to that future. Hi. Here. <laughs> I'm Renata from Brazil. And uh, you said your grandfather kept the key executives when he was very young. And I was wondering if you were doing the same thing as chairman. And also, I was curious to know, how do you actually feel being so young and leading a board? And how do you relate to other board members? I mean, how are they? How is the composition of the board? And how they feel about you also? Yeah. Well, yeah. So I, I've been on the board since I'm 21. So now I'm an old <laughs> board member. And uh, 
But to, to answer, to answer your, your question, I've, I've worked with management teams who worked with my grandfather. I think the important switch is when you actually choose yourself the management teams you'll work with. And so that, that's something which has happened since. And so then it becomes a work relationship that you've been building. Super. That, that is the, the big switch. Thank you. So I have a short question. How many shareholders do you have? I have two questions. How many share family shareholders do you have? 70. 70, okay. The, one, the other one is more complex. So after uh, Mercedes failing miserably yeah. with Chrysler, you jump into the fray. What can Fiat bring in? What is your ideas that you think this is an opportunity for, for Fiat yeah. rather than probably <laughs> a road downhill? Yeah, well, I, I think it's very difficult to compare uh, Chrysler when Daimler merged with it because today Chrysler has gone through a Chapter 11 process, so it's a very different entity in terms of its balance sheets, right? And also there's been a lot of things who have been renegotiated. So it's always difficult. You should compare apples to apples, and reality is not apples to apples. Uh, the other big difference is that what we're trying to do is, is really work in, uh, in a product development. And if you look at the product development of, of the Chrysler brands, which are Jeep, which are Ram, which is a big pickup, Dodge, and Chrysler, and Chrysler is the smallest brand they have in terms of units, and our brands, you actually see some complementarities. And so this is really where we're trying to work and try to diminish the capital requirements for new products and new engines. And one of the things we will try and see and we'll launch in Q1 2011, the Fiat 500 in the, the US will be produced in Mexico, is actually to see if there's a market also here to people who are more and more environmentally conscious to smaller cars who are better for the environment. And at the same time, we think brands like Jeep has a huge potential. And through our distribution in Europe or in Latin America, we think that we could increase their sales. But it's tough, and we'll see. <laughs>